Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and today I'm going to show you how to build this one chunk Japanese castle. This build has a ton of exterior detail and it looks great, but it's actually pretty easy to put together once you know what you're doing. I've kept the interior minimal so you can use it for whatever you like, and of course, as usual, it fits within a single chunk of 16 by 16 blocks. Let's get into it. We're going to start off with a stone foundation. We'll use cracked stone brick to mark out the four corners of the chunk, two blocks tall and stepped up like this. Laying cobblestone across the front row, we'll add rows of three cobble stairs coming in from each side, and two stone brick stairs in the middle which will lead up to the entrance. Everything else can be filled in with cobblestone blocks. We'll add a floor design now to make building the walls easier. You don't have to copy this design, it's not essential for the build, so get creative if you like designing floors. One thing you might want to do is lay down some glowstone blocks somewhere near the centre covered up by carpets. You could also leave a trapdoor somewhere so you can use the foundation as a basement. With the floor in place we can start on the walls, which are mostly made of cyan stained clay or terracotta as it's called now, and white wool. Lay a 2x2 here, some stone slabs next to the stairs, and start a pillar at the outside corner. Build a window frame behind the slabs and fill it in with red glass panes, then complete the frame and top off the walls with wool, adding another layer across the top of the window frame, and a redstone lamp on the corner lit with a lever. We'll bring the wool out across the door frame and mirror what we've just built on the opposite side. Moving around to the sides, fill in two more blocks of the wall, then as you build the rest, leave gaps for four window frames spaced out like this. Use the same materials from the front of the build and put a redstone lamp on the back corner as well. Fill in the windows with red glass panes, then build the same wall on the opposite side. The back wall is going to have the same structure as the front, except the central section doesn't have a doorway, it's just a flat wall of stained clay and wool. While we're back here, we'll start the next floor directly on top of this central wall, beginning with the stained clay, two wide and three high, add wool on the top, then fill in the walls on either side one block back, leaving a gap for a window one block out from the central pillar. Do the same on the other side over here. Bring the second and third rows of stained clay and the wool out towards the front of the build, stopping one block from the front wall. Leave the bottom row empty, we'll fill this gap in later. For now, start building the front wall the same as the back, but this time don't put wool on top of the central section. Instead, add two extra wool blocks above each window so it looks like it has eyebrows, and fill in the space between them and around them as we start the next floor. This one has two smaller windows, and once again it's three blocks tall with stained clay, then a row of wool across the top, with redstone lamps at each corner. Fill in the side walls with solid stained clay. The sides should be one block in from the floor below, but reach all the way to the back wall. Fill in the back wall flat as well, adding windows like the ones on the front wall. We'll start this next floor by building a recess here, and window frames either side, leaving a one block gap underneath these walls, and filling in the sides ten blocks long. The front wall should look the same as the back, and we'll put a row of wool on top with another row behind it. Fill in this final side wall, and add the wool to the back half as well. For the top floor, make a 6x8 room with a two wide doorway at the front and back. Add two rows of wool to the top, and the basic shape of the castle is complete. I'll put the measurements for each floor on the screen now. While that's happening, let me remind you that support from Patreon helps me make these videos. You can go to patreon.com slash to donate and help support future tutorials. Before we start on the roof details, which are the most important part of this build, we'll place some birch stairs above the door frame on either side, and add some details to the walls and windows using trapdoors. Now grab some dark oak stairs and use them to fill in the gap between the first and second floors. Invert the ones directly over the doorway and place the rest normally place them on top of the wall around the perimeter, stopping when you reach the pillar on the back wall. We'll do something similar to join the third and fourth floors, but we'll start adding detail here. Stair placement can be tricky since corner stairs like to join together in odd ways, so it might take a bit of trial and error before you get it looking right. This front piece will have two sections where corner stairs come out and around, so keep rotating yourself around to create the corners you want. Once you're happy with that, fill in the side walls with a straight line of stairs, and repeat the design from the front on the back wall. Returning to the front wall, we'll create arches over the second floor windows using birch stairs, starting with an inverted stair against the pillar, and then alternating them to make an evenly spaced archway over both of these windows. Now we'll place some spruce stairs back to back in the centre and over the top of each window arch. We're going to layer dark oak stairs in front of these later so it doesn't look quite so goofy. 
Around the corner, place an outside corner stair, a regular stair, then an inside corner, and begin a large arch that should meet up in the centre of this row of white wool. Repeat this on the opposite side of the build, and around the back we'll copy the birch and spruce arches from the front wall. Now we're ready to add the second layer of stairs. Start on the first floor, with inverted stairs on each redstone lamp. Come inward with a stair and a corner, and do the same on the opposite side. Then build a tall arch which should come to a point at those spruce stairs in the centre, allowing you to place corner stairs on the tip. Place an inverted stair on either side of those topmost stairs and line the birch and spruce archways with dark oak as well, using corner stairs each time you connect to the spruce. The last stair can connect to the wall and corner around it, ready to join up with some more stairs on the side wall. Mirror the same archway on the opposite side, and once that's done, we'll continue a straight line of stairs along each side of these walls. On the back side of the first floor, we'll create window frames like this, inverted stairs in the corners here, and coming straight out above the window, then connected to the roof line and topped off with dark oak slabs. The overhanging row of stairs can continue across the centre, then follow the same arch design on the opposite side, and make sure to put inverted stairs against the redstone lamps on the corners. We can now add dark oak to the window arches on the second floor, basically the same as we did on the front wall, but connected in the middle. We'll also use stairs to cover this opening where the lever is visible on the side walls, and continue the roof line along, inverting the stairs over each window for variation. Classical Japanese roofs tend to curve slightly upwards at the tips, so we'll do our best to emulate this by placing a slab at each roof corner half a block up from the stairs. On the second floor these will be top half slabs, so we'll place flower pots on each one for some subtle detail. Moving on up to the side walls on the third floor, we can build a row outwards from the topmost spruce stair to the corners, adding an inverted stair and slab when we reach the redstone lamps at either end. As before, this gets mirrored on the opposite side of our build. On the front and back, we'll alternate inverted and rightways upstairs, skip over the trap doors, and place two inverted stairs back to back in the centre. Add a cheeky slab underneath the stairs here and here. We'll also add some trap doors under the windows on the next floor, and before we go any further, we'll add fences and fence gates to every corner which has redstone lamps, for some extra detail and support. Back up on the fourth floor, we'll alternate stairs coming in from either corner, joining two inverted stairs in the middle. This pattern goes on the back and the front, but there's still a gap between the side and the top floor. We'll fill this in by winding the stairs around the side and having them come out in the middle, where we'll create a wavy pattern with three stairs and a slab on each side. We've finally reached the top floor. The first thing this needs is a ring of acacia fences, with fence gates by the doorways if you want to get out onto the roof. We'll add trap doors and acacia doors to the doorways, then birch stairs above each doorway, and a birch fence border around the top. To start the roof, we'll make an upside down T-shape out of red wool on each end, then return to the dark oak stairs and build an alternating pattern out from the birch fences. We'll slope it upwards in the center, add two planks behind it and slope it upwards again, then connect this to the roof and build the rest of the roof the way you normally would, straight rows of stairs from end to end. Last of all, we're going to make this roof look more ornate, by once again alternating stairs and meeting corner stairs in the centre, adding raised slabs to each of the corners, then filling in the ends of the roof so that the red wool is bordered by corner stairs and no gaps remain. By now, you've probably sworn an oath never to look at dark oak stairs again, but the result is this rather awesome looking Japanese castle. Since the exterior took a while and was quite ornate, we're going to do a quick and minimal interior. Start by lighting it all up with torches now that the roof is closed off, and then begin a wide staircase with platforms that spiral around the room at the start of each new floor, allowing you to get a decent amount of floor space while still giving the build a nice open feel. You might also want to add some fences as support for the platforms, to give some sense of structure to the room below, and to stop yourself from falling from high places all the time. Plants will be a welcome addition to the interior since there isn't a huge amount of colour in here right now. If you want to turn this into a survival base, of course, you've got enough room to fill each floor with enchanting, brewing and storage, and you could maximise your floor space by just filling in the rest of the slabs and connecting everything with ladders. I've done that on the top floor anyway, since this might lead to a private shrine or maybe a bedroom. 
A few final details to add. Minecraft swords wouldn't quite work, but you could place two trip wire hooks or levers on the walls as presentational sword racks, and the stone fortification outside could have grown some moss and leaves over the years by swapping out the stone brick and cobble for their mossy variants. Thanks for watching this one chunk tutorial which was made possible with the support of my wonderful community of patrons. You can head to patreon.com slash pixelriffs to donate and get rewards, including membership to my patrons only Minecraft server. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, download this build from the page linked in the description, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future tutorials. My name has been Pixelriffs, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now!